<clears throat> Let me say this to you, that we, uh, on the last Sunday of 2015, we preached the message on forgiveness. That message is also up on YouTube. We preached the message on forgiveness, and we ended the year focusing on making sure that we're not carrying unforgiveness into, into 2016. <clears throat> Let me say that again. We don't want to carry unforgiveness into 2016. Unforgiveness blocks a lot of things in our life. God loves you, and he wants to move on your behalf. But when you have unforgiveness, you're literally going against the number one thing that Jesus did. Jesus laid his life down. Why? So that we can be forgiven and have relationship. Now, let me, I'm not going to stay here for, for long, but I just want to recap is that um, God knows that in some cases of the situation that you feel like you're harboring, that you have unforgiveness towards someone, God knows where you are. There's certain things that have taken place in our life that are a process. It's like peeling an onion. Amen? So we need healing from the things, let's say, that someone said to us or did to us. There could be levels of abuse that people put us through, and, and God knows that it's going to take a process, but the important thing is let God in so that you can start the process or, or do something with it. Does that make sense? So, so it's very, very important to let God in to do a work. You know, you can, you can sit there and listen to messages all day long, but if you don't allow God to do what he wants to do, if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to make change in you, then all it is is just words. It's just somebody entertaining you, amen? But you got to let the Lord do the work. you got to be open, even though something may hit you, and just like, you know what, I don't want to forgive that person. Let Jesus come in and do the work. Let me tell you, he'll do what no, what no other doctor can do. He'll do what no other psychologist or psychiatrist can do. Let Jesus in because he'll heal you. Amen? All right. So I'm going to teach a little bit today. And when they were doing that song, Alpha and Omega, I was like, wow, I picked the wrong day to teach rather than preach. Because man, when they were doing that song, I was ready to just jump out of my skin because I love what, what that song says in worship unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We may have to do it again. I don't know. But listen, so I want to talk today. Well, let me, let, me, let me read this scripture to you. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 20. Please keep in mind that I'm giving you things. When I give you this message today, this message is to help prepare you for a blessed 2016. Okay? A blessed 2016. How many of you got, want God to be involved in your 2016? I know I do. Amen. I believe in God. I believe he's real. I believe he's powerful. I want him to be involved in my 2016. So there's things that I'm going to be giving you to help lay the foundation for the year. So let's read Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 20. And it's the parable of the talents. And, and verse 14, many of us know this, but let's just read this. But it says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another he gave one, each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents, now let me just stop right there. A talent, well, what's a talent, pastor? A talent is a sum of money. And Jesus is using just a parable, a story, to try to make an example about the kingdom of God. So he says, then he who had received the five talents went, and he traded with them, and he made another five talents. So everyone say he multiplied it. Verse 17 says, and likewise, he who had received the two gained two more also, but he who had received the one, the one went and dug in the ground and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and he settled accounts with them. So he who had received the five talents came and he brought five others. So remember, he brought the multiplication. He doubled it. So he brought another five saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of our Lord. Now, he did the same thing with the guy who did too. You know, just, just, just if you continue reading, he did the same thing. With, but the guy with the one, there was a problem. 
There was an issue because he didn't multiply. He didn't do anything with what the Lord gave him, okay? Amen. Now, we're going to talk about a word today that we don't hear normally in the English language, and it's the word called steward. Everyone say a steward. A steward is a manager of something. If you're a steward, you're a manager. If you walk into KFC and there's a problem with your, with your food, you can go to the counter and you'd be correct. Say, let me talk to the steward. They would look at you crazy, but, but bottom line is you're asking, who's the manager? Who's running this place? Because I have an issue. Now, don't be mean to people at KFC because KFC is good, but listen, all right? <clears throat> So you're a manager of something. I want to talk to you about four principles that are very important in stewardship, okay? So remember, you're a manager of something. So here's the thing. In God's kingdom, number one is this, is the principle of ownership. The principle of ownership. We're going we're gonna to talk about that in a minute. So let's see what Psalms 24 and 1 says. Psalms 24 and 1, it says this. It says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. All right? So what did, what did God do in Genesis chapter 1 when God created and God did all these things? And what did he do with Adam? He took Adam and what he created, what God owned, and he put Adam in the garden to take care of the garden. God created it. God owned it. But he put man or he put Adam in the garden to take care of it. So in the beginning of Genesis, God creates everything and puts Adam in the garden to work it and to take care of it. In biblical stewardship, God owns everything. We are simply managers or administrators acting on his behalf. Can I read that one more time? God owns everything. We are simply managers or administrators acting on his behalf. Listen to this scripture. It's just so powerful. I mean, we made our point right there, but listen to this scripture in 1 Chronicles 29, 11, if you could put it up, Mark. <clears throat> it says this, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Come on, I want you to say this with me. God owns everything. It's all God's. Amen. It's all God's. And the sooner you get that, it's actually more freeing. God's not trying to keep stuff from you. We're going to learn about this in a minute. So God, God wants you to enjoy, but we're going to get to that in a second. Now, principle number two is the principle of responsibility. So principle number one is who owns everything? We cleared that up. God owns it. So number two is the principle of responsibility. So although God gives us all things richly to enjoy, nothing is ours. Nothing really belongs to us. God owns everything. We're responsible for how we treat it, listen, and what we do with it. Owners have rights. Stewards have responsibilities. Owners have rights. But you're a steward. You have a responsibility. So what has God given you? Listen, and I know that we, we started off with the parable of the talents or the story about the talents. But listen, I'm a steward over Joanne Guevara. I'm a steward over my wife. I'm a steward over this church. I'm a steward with my money. I'm a steward with my children. I'm a steward with whatever is in my life. God has given it to me. So that I can take care of it. Come on now. My car, I'm a steward over my vehicle. You know what was funny? I, you know me. I tell it all. But so I, this morning I'm getting up. So we go to the car to go come to church. And I look in the back seat on the floor. And there's a whole bunch of water, empty water bottles on the floor. And I was like, man, I'm going to preach a message on stewardship. And my car's dirty. You know what I'm saying? So what did I do before I left, even though we were a little late? I was like, I'm going to clean my car because I got to show up. And I want to be a good steward of what God gave me. You say, well, it doesn't mean you're a bad steward if you're sloppy. I'm not trying to tell you you're sloppy, and I'm not trying to tell All I'm just trying to tell you is that when I looked at that, I was like, I want to be a good steward of what God gave me. Does that make sense? So there's a responsibility on my end. Listen, 1 Corinthians, uh, no, let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 to 18. This is really good. Everybody say, real good. real 
All right, listen. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Come on, look at somebody and say, just work it. Hallelujah. Come on, just do one of these. Just, just work it. You just got to just work it. All right, listen. <laughs> if I had a DJ with me on some turntables, I could have went somewhere with that. But listen, work it out. Listen, but Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you'll certainly die. The Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Can I just give you a nugget, just, just a thought, just a thought. I've never heard this before as I was reading it. You know what's amazing? He's taking care of the garden and taking care of it. And isn't it funny? Because I feel like it doesn't say that he was doing a good job, but... I think it would say something if he wasn't doing a good job. He was taking care of the garden, and because he was faithful, God said, you know what, man? You're by yourself. Let me make something for you. You've taken care of my stuff. Let me give you something. Mm, that's a good thought right there. That was a good thought. That'll preach, huh, Nat? Another time, another time. All right, listen. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, to finish this point right here, point number 2 of responsibility. says, and, and moreover, it is required in stewards or managers that one be found faithful. Faithful. We need to be faithful with what God has given us. We need to be faithful and a good steward over what God gave us. Faithfulness is important to God. Do you know that there's a scripture, I think it's in, in 2 Corinthians, that it says, even if you're not faithful, God says, I'm going to remain faithful because faithfulness is who I am. God is faithful even when we're not faithful. But one of the key principles about stewardship is that we are faithful. We need to be faithful. Faithfulness, listen, if you think about faithfulness, don't, don't think about like, church stuff and home stuff and everything. Just, I want you to focus on one thing when it comes to faithfulness. Faithfulness is God's character. And because God is your father, that character possibility is in you. Does that make sense? Anything that God is, is it can be in you and the potential is already in you. Because God is faithful. Amen? Let's go to number three. So number three is the principle of accountability. The principle of accountability. Let's, a steward or a manager is one who manages the possessions of another. We are all stewards of the, listen, resources, abilities, and opportunities that God has entrusted to our care. And one day, each one of us will be called to give an account for how we have managed what the master has given us. That's good right there. So check this out. So we're going to have to give an account, but let me say this to you. One of the things that he said that you need to be a good steward over is the opportunities that God has passed your way that come into your life. God wants you to be a good steward over them. He wants you to be sensitive to his voice because he has things for you. Church, let me just say this to you. We are fasting and praying. Because as we fast and pray, I'm praying so much, and you need to be praying that the opportunities that God has, you won't miss them. They won't pass you. You'll know when they hit you. You'll know when it's God. You'll know when it's the Lord. Does that make sense? I want you to hear when God's, you know, I, uh, I didn't plan on sharing this, but one of the greatest mistakes I ever made was, um, uh, I remember I went to, uh, uh, I, I got into a car accident and I needed a new car. And I was, uh, uh, you know, I, I was young. I think I was like, I don't know, I was like 19 or something like that. And I just received the Lord. And I was like, I'm going to get a car and I'm not taking my dad with me. It was one of them deals, you know. I said, you know, my dad covers me, but, you know, I'm going, I'm going to, to get a car. And, man, I found, listen, now this is back in 1991. 1991 or 1992, and I go to this lot, uh, it was called Rolling Wheels, was the, was the name of the dealer on Broward Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. 
And so I go there and I see a BMW 7, 7, 735. They didn't go up further than that, I think, in that year. A 735 IL. And I go in the car and it's clean. And I was like, I knew they painted it. I knew something, but I didn't care. I mean, it looked pristine. And these guys, I mean, I turned it on. It was like, zoom, you know, and everything. And here I am, this young buck and everything. And, 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 and I was just like, oh, my gosh. So I go, this Jamaican guy comes, comes up to me, you know, dreads and all. And he comes, he goes, hey, man, you know, and he goes, this car, this, you know, and everything. I was like, how much is the car? And he said, he goes, 5,500. I was like, what? I was like, oh, man. I said, I started sweating. I was like, oh, God. I was like, oh, man. And I took out my check and I, I put a deposit. I said, let me hold it. So I said, let me go back. And he goes, yeah. He goes, just come back. To, I said, I'll come back today, you know, and everything. So I left and I came back and, and Jamaican guy wasn't there, but the owner was there. So I go to the owner, this cocky kid walks into the office, and I walk into the office, and I was like, yeah, man, I said, hey, that BMW, I came to get it, but man, I said, the price is too high. And, and you know, because I was trying to be like, I'm going to negotiate, you know, I'm going to be a good negotiator. I said, the price is too high. And, um, and he said, well, he goes, do you want the car or don't you want the car? And I said, you know what? I said, That's, you need to go down on the price. And he's, and he's like, well, he goes, I, he goes, we can't do that. So I was just playing tough. My dad said, you know, if you walk out, they'll come chase you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, he, he said, so you want your check back? And, you know, he made that clear. You want your check back? I said, yeah. So I took the check back from him, and I'm walking out. And then I was like, oh, man, I want this car. So I turned around. I really want And I knew the price was good. So I go back, and I was like, hey, man. I said, you know what? Let's do the deal. And he goes, no. He goes, we we can't do the deal. And I was like, why? He says, because the price is 6,500. And I was just like, wait, how are you going to go up on me a thousand dollars in one shot? He goes, no, he goes, the Jamaican man messed up. And he goes, it was, it's supposed to be 65. He told you 55, but I was going to honor it just because, you know, we have a good reputation here. And I was like, oh man, I just, <laughs> So anyway, make sure you know when a good deal comes your way. <laughs> oh, man, that was, that was rough, man. That was rough. I settled for a Nissan Sentra, you know, but it's all right. Not from him somewhere else, but. And God did bless me, but, man, that one hurt. That was painful. I'm still feeling that one. I was going to be riding out. I was like, man, you know, I'm going to throw my. Man, I, was gonna, I had two, two, two two kicker 12s in my trunk, man. My whole box was going to fit. I had like about 1,000 watts going through my I said, man, I was going to. Anyway, that was young, young days, young days. Throw some 15 by 10s on there. I was like rolling out. Listen, Colossians. Now listen, the last one, we're going to finish with this. Number four is this, the principle of reward. The principle of reward, okay? So Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 24, if you see it on, on there on the screen, says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So if you are responsible for anything, Come on now, listen, I'm going to get in your stuff right now. If you're responsible for anything, God says, do it, not as unto man, do it as unto me. Do it as unto me. He says, if you're going to work hard, he says, I want you to work hard because of me. That's a tough one right there. Because even in that verse, he's actually, and of course the Bible doesn't, you know, promote slavery, you know, and, and any of that. But right there he was talking about people that were in bondage to somebody else. And he said, even those people, he says, when they ask you to do something, he goes, I want you to work as unto me. I want them to, I want them to see Christ in you. Come on now. That's for real. We need to work as unto the Lord. Let's go to Matthew 25, 21. Now, we started out with Matthew. Remember, he's talking about the talents. And verse 21 says this. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler of many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Now, I want to read one more scripture to you. We just read two good ones. I just want to finish one. Mark, can you go to Luke 16? I know I, I missed that one. Luke 16, verses 1 to 2. And I want you to see this, church. Listen, what it, look at what it says. He also said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward. 
Okay, come on now. He had a manager. And an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship for you can no longer be a steward. So can God take away what he gave you because you're not a good steward? Well, come on now. I lift up both hands and I've seen that happen in my life. Come on now. Let's be real. Because if that ain't you, you're lying in church. There's things in our life that have been removed from our life. Come on, let's just get real. One of the main ones is marriage. We were taking care of our business, our ministry. We were taking, and we weren't taking care of our wife. And she got up and left. And you might have been happy about that, but you know what I'm saying? But, but what the problem was, listen, but what the problem was, you weren't covering her and being a good steward Come on now, and I'm not picking on the guys, it's vice versa. You know, your husband work hard all day, and he just, hey, you know, man, can you make me something? You were at home watching Lifetime all day and everything, and you said, nah, man, you can do it. Your legs work, you know? And there was no taking care of everything. I'm, I'm, and I'm not assuming that women don't work. I'm not assuming that. So just take it easy. Those rocks were about to hit me like, like curveballs, man. Listen. Do you see what I'm saying? You got to be a good steward over the things in your life. Let me share this story with you guys real quick. And I'm just, I want to get personal because this changed my life. This message changed my life. <clears throat> when, I, when I became a Christian, um, I was a lifeguard at a pool. And, and some of you heard this story, but I'm, it's worth telling again. I was a lifeguard at a pool. I got great money for sitting on a chair, watching people swim. It was awesome, okay? So just talk about the, the liter literally doing nothing. And in six years of lifeguarding, I never had to save, I had to save one little baby. And he, uh, trust me, he was worth it. And I got him in time. But, you know, one little baby in six years. So just think just chilling on the lifeguard chair. So my pastor, you guys heard me say, my pastor, my youth pastor said to me, he said, he goes, the Lord told me to tell you to preach in three weeks. So I was like, wow, I've never preached before. So I go preach. God moves as I'm walking off the platform. God, God tells me in my spirit, I know. He says, you're going to do this for the rest of your life. Speaks to me, calls me into the ministry. And so here's the thing. I thought I had to go away to Bible school, all these different things, you know. Listen, and so I'm praying, and this is what God tells me to do. He says, go work for your father. I said, man, that must be the devil. <laughs> you know why? Let me tell you why it must be the devil, I thought. Because when I went to my dad, I was excited. I said, God. I said, Dad. Now, I didn't tell him God told me because he wasn't saved yet because he would look at me like I'm crazy, you know. And I said, Dad, I said, you know what? I need, I need to come work for you. And he just looked at me. He said, son, he goes, you know, we just started this company. He goes, I don't have any business. What am I going to have you do? He goes, I don't have money to pay you. And I was like, and I was just sitting there. I said, well, you know, inside of myself, I said, I'll come because God told me to go. Quit my job. My first paycheck with my dad was $80. $80. And this is what my dad had me do. I used to have, and I'm not being exaggerated, I used to have a phobia about talking to people on the phone that I didn't know. I'm talking about when I was in high school, my brother would order pizzas for me. My brother would order, he's younger than me, two years younger, he would order car parts for me. You know, I could not talk to people on the phone that I didn't know. I don't know why I had this phobia. So listen to what my dad does. My dad puts me on the phones. And my dad is rough. So I remember one time I, I, I took an address down and he said, he said, Atlantic Boulevard or Atlantic Avenue. And, and I didn't know because I wasn't taking down the full zip codes and everything because he said, take the full address, you know, and I would write quick. And I, I don't know why I wasn't taking the full address. And I said, Atlantic Avenue. So my dad goes to the job. It was way in West Palm Beach where it was just real close to where we were. And he says, you didn't write down. And he yelled at me. He says, you didn't write down the, the right thing. So here's the thing. So his business is growing. So all of a sudden, and listen, this, listen to what the Lord says. I hear this message. And, and, and I hear a message, and, and, I'll, and I'll, I know I'll preach it this year, about Elijah and Elisha. 
and I hear this message about these prophets and how one served the other. And God spoke to me. Listen, God spoke to me, and he said, serve your pastor. So I'm called into the ministry. So now I'm like, okay, I'm going to serve him. And, and so listen, so let my, my youth pastor, I remember he was putting out chairs one day. I noticed when he came in, nobody was helping. I said, you know what? I'm going to go. I, I told my pastor, I said, pastor, I said, you don't have to do that ever again. I said, I'm going to set up the chairs for you. So I began to be faithful, and God began to, like, promote me, promote me, promotion like crazy at the church. I was like, you know, now all of a sudden I was just like nobody, and he's like, you're going to be head of the ushers. You're gonna, and I mean, all I was doing was just serving. Check this out. So I'm being blessed with my pastor and the things of God. At work, let me tell you what I'm doing. There's no business. The phone's not ringing. So the, so the distance between phone calls was a long time between phone calls. So what I would do, we, had a, we, we still have it, a garage door company, and the big garage doors, they come wrapped in plastic and big pieces of cardboard. So what I did is I took the big pieces of cardboard and I laid them on the floor and I would go to sleep because there was no work. So the first time my dad caught me, he didn't say nothing, but he sort of made a comment. He said, listen, why don't you read the books on the garage doors? You got to know, you're on the phones. You got to know what to sell. And I was like, man, I don't want to study about garage doors. That's, I'm going into the ministry. Come on now. I'm going to be a preacher. What do I need to know about garage doors for? So, you know, another time I laid out the cardboard, went to sleep. Another time my dad found me, my legs were up on the, on the, uh, on the, on, the, on, the, on the desk, you know, and I was just kicked back, and I was like, you know, like that, you know, and then my dad walks in, I hear click, click, and, and I tried to scramble, but he caught me, and my legs are up, so check this out, so one day, I'm just chilling, and I'm talking to Jesus, and this is what Jesus tells me, this is what the Lord tells me, he said, I want you to serve your father like you serve your pastor, That's the truth. I don't mess around when I tell you that I heard God's voice. He said, I want you to serve your father like you serve your pastor. From that day on, I was never late. From that day on, I told my father, see, my father used to stay out late doing estimates. And I said, Dad, I said, you don't got to do that anymore. I said, I will go and do the estimate. We would be 4.30 is when we would clock out, and my dad, I said, hey, dad, I'll see you at home. And he, he's like, uh, no, he goes, I got to go over here, you know, and, and, and measure a door. And I was like, dad, don't worry, go home, I'll do it. And I began to serve my father. But all of a sudden, I started noticing that in the company, I started getting more pay. I started getting favor with my father. All of a sudden, he came to me, he goes, listen, I put you as vice president of the company. And then all of a sudden, you know, my dad says, hey, listen, don't, you know, this is on video. My brother might get mad at me. He said, he said, don't tell your brother. And he would slip me money, you know, because I will work hard. He would slip me some extra. You know, he said, you know, all that. Listen, my father one day on an Easter Sunday gave his heart to Jesus Christ. And the Lord told me he got saved because he saw how you worked as unto me. And he said, I want that. Come on now. Hallelujah. That's the truth. That's the truth. And when I left that company, when I left my dad, when it was time for me to step into full-time ministry, I went to my dad and I said, Dad, I said, listen. And I couldn't even contain myself. And I broke down. I said, Dad, it's time for me to go. And he knew that it was time for me to go. And my dad my dad don't cry. My dad broke and he began weeping and he, and he hugged me and he says, I never would have built this company if it wasn't for you. That's what he told me. And he released me. I said, Dad, you know I'm not leaving you, but I got to do what God. He goes, I know. He goes, I knew this day was coming. He says, but I didn't want, you know, he goes, well, part of me didn't want it, but I knew the day was coming. And I left blessed because I serve my father as unto the Lord. Come on, church. Give God some, some praise. <clears throat> I'm going to ask our musicians to come up. You guys can walk on the front here. It's, it's all right. Walk up on the stage. Alex, if you could, I want you guys to come on up. Church, let me say this to you. God wants 
you blessed in every area of your life. And the way, one of the major ways that he uses, that's a requirement, is you must be a good steward. I want to tell you, church, that I learned something. I, I'm, I'm 44 years old. And now when I go to uh, the other day, I, I just noticed that as I was sitting down at Sizzler, I don't know if you've been to their salad bar, but it's real good. But listen, so I'm at Sizzler, and I take my napkin, and I clean my, I clean my, I clean my, my table. And I take the plates, and I, and I start stacking them. And I was like, man, what is wrong with me? You know? Cleaning, you're making it look good. I don't, and even other people's clutter, I grab it and stack the, the things. Guess what? When I was a little kid, when we would go to eat, my mother would grab a napkin. And that table was cleaner when we left than it was when we got there. How many of you grew up where you had your mama uh, put those pla big plastic bag things over the couches? That's the most ridiculous thing ever. You, if you don't care about it. When you sit down, it's like crunch. And, and for us, if you were in the living room and you sat on those couches or you played on those couches, you were going to get it. You were going to get it. Listen, till this day, me and Joanne, we are, for Christmas, we were at my mom's house. And I'm telling you, if you move the bed, come on. If you move the bed and you take a white and you do this on the side of the baseboard, it's going to come out white. But you know what? God has blessed my parents, and I feel it's because they've been good stewards. I saw them take care of things that, you, that, that I just think, like, it's so silly. My mother-in-law, the same thing. She, just, she would take little bags from the supermarket, and she folds them and folds them each bag into a triangle and nice and neat and then I look at my mother-in-law I think man no wonder she's blessed because the details mattered come on church the details mattered the details mattered I encourage you the Lord has encouraged you this year listen to tell you that the details matter the little things matter. I don't want you to be OCD. I'm not telling you to be that. What I'm just saying to you is like, what is in your hand and what do you have that you could be a good steward over? Because it's God's and he made you a manager. You're a manager by default. No matter what, you're a manager. You're either going to be a good manager or you're going to be a bad manager. It's one or the other. And if you notice, one guy said, well done. Good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to give you much. And to one other guy, he said, you know what? I heard that you were being unfaithful with my stuff. He said, you're no longer a manager. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. Listen, I want to I challenge you today about something. No matter where you have ever been or whatever you have done, Let's just say you were fired from several jobs. Listen, I want to say this to you. That is in your past. Today is a new day where you can sit there and say, how can I be a good steward over what God gave me? I'm talking about everything. How, do, how can I be a good steward with this woman that he gave me? How can I be a good steward when I go you know, to Wells Fargo and I take a look and see what's going on in there. Am I being a good steward? Am I being a good steward in my bedroom when I look around and it's like, am I putting my clothes away? How's my closet look? You say, oh man, here we go. You don't have, listen, listen, you don't have to receive what I'm saying to you. You don't have to. But details matter. Details matter. Details matter. I want you to be great. God wants you to be great. God wants you to have favor. You know what favor is, right? That's when people like you and they don't even know why they like you. Favor is that people do stuff for you and they don't even know why they're doing it. I, mean, I, just, I just want to do this for you. But let me tell you, one of the ways to have favor is be a good steward. 
Be a good manager of whatever is in your hand. And I want to remind you of one thing. The past is over. I believe with all my heart that you can stand up today just like Pastor Irwin did. And, and when I'm sitting there sleeping on cardboard boxes and you can say, I'm going to be faithful with AA Garage Door Company. I'm going to be faithful with this. I'm going to be faithful with that. Because I'll tell you this right now. And I'll finish with this, and I'm going to ask you to stand in a moment. When I wasn't serving my father, there was a vast difference in my elevation of promotion in ministry compared to my elevation in business. One area was flourishing. The other area was just flatlined. If anything, it was going down. Because if you stand still, you're actually not standing still. You're rolling backwards. I want you to be great. This is not a condemnation message. It's a message just to say, what can we be a good steward over? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Were you blessed this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> well, I, I just want you to just, just put your hands out, and I just want to pray for you real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, as we put our hands out, we just want to say, God, that whatever is in our hand, we're asking that we would be a good steward over it. God, I pray for every single person that you would minister to them in this 2016, that, that by the Holy Spirit, that you would just, just put an examination in our heart, Lord, a, a spirit of excellence that we would say, what am I being a good steward with and what am I not? God, if, I've, if I have failed in certain things right now, God, I just ask you to forgive me. If I haven't been a good steward over things in my house or my, or my company or my business or where I work, if I've had a bad attitude and just don't care and it shows, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. The Bible says that promotion comes from the Lord. And God, I ask you in Jesus' name that you would, just for our sake, because you do want to see us walking in your fullness, that God, that you would point those things out so that we can better ourselves. That we can better ourselves and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So, Father, bless your people. And the other thing, Lord, as our hands are out, not only do we offer you those things, but we also ask that you would pour out onto us your supernatural goodness, your supernatural favor. And, Father God, you said in your word that you would bless the work of my hands. You said that you would bless where my feet go. And God, I want to be faithful to you, Lord. So these hands that I have, these are holy hands. These are powerful hands. These hands are full of signs and wonders and miracles. These hands are full of benevolence. These hands are hardworking hands. These hands glorify Jesus Christ. So Father, I present my hands to you and thank you that you bless the work of my hands. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, even I know in my spirit that there's been some things being held back that you have for some of your people in this room and it's because of a stewardship issue but I thank you Lord that we receive the word today and we thank you Lord that it's that it's going to produce fruit and one more thing before I let you go if you're in this place and you say pastor you know what I sort of walked away from God I just I haven't been serving the Lord I believe in God but I just and it's not even a church issue. It's just in my heart. I just know that I haven't given God the attention that he deserves. And in 2016, I want to see a change in my life. And I know God, I know God wants to be more involved in my life. And I want to let him be more involved in my life. If that's you, just right where you're sitting, can you slip up your hand and say, Pastor, could you just pray for me? If that's you, I want you to slip up your hand and say, Pastor, please pray for me. God bless you, sister. God bless you too. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Is there anyone else? I'm not going to call you forward. This is between you and God right where you're sitting. But just slip up your hand. Let me see it so I, so I see your hand. God bless you, sweetheart. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you over there. Amen. Hands are going up everywhere. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Amen. God bless you, ma'am. Amen. 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 Don't miss out on this prayer. Can you slip up your hand? That's you. Amen. You can put it down if you already. God bless you, ma'am. Hallelujah. 
I want to pray with you, okay? Let's pray this prayer. We're going to pray this prayer together. Say, Father God, I love you so much. You are so good. This year, 2016, I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you these hands. Everything is yours. Thank you so much that you love me so much. You want to have a strong relationship with me. The way that that happens, the only way that happens is through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me. Purify me. Sanctify me. Make me new. Every area of my life belongs to you. I submit to you, God. Do your work in my life. I give you my heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. But you could be, you could be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We're going to ask our...